Welcome back to Global Money Academy. Today, of course, we are talking about EV stocks. Now, EV has been a very hot topic in 2021, and there's a lot of sentiment behind the EV space at the moment. At the moment, valuations are through the roof, and that's why we are here today. On this channel, we tend to look at fundamentals, and we want to buy businesses that are at least trading at decent valuations when we buy them, right? So there's not a, op there's not a, few, not a lot of options actually on the table when it comes to the EV space because well, Justin, as you know, the valuations are just absolutely insane at the moment when it comes to EV. So I think this in the, or this conversation is going to be really, really interesting. I've got no idea what you are doing when it comes to the EV space. I've got a few investments and I am exposed to, to the EV industry in one way or another. So yes, stick around in this video. Things are about to get super interesting. Yeah, so Davi, I think uh, obviously the big discussion is, you know, which which EV stock to buy for 2022, which which is going to be the stock that makes everybody a lot of money in 2022. And I've got to say, I'm quite cautious when it comes to EV. I want to say off the bat that some of the opinions we're going to express in this video may actually offend a lot of people. And in addition to which, a lot of people may not necessarily agree with everything we have to say. But I've learned over 20 years of investing, sometimes being a contrarian, is a very very profitable way to conduct your business especially when it comes to investing now i obviously have a specific strategy related to ev i'm going to be talking about that you've got a strategy i'm sure you're going to talk to us about that but i want to talk specifically about the valuations at the moment in the ev space i'm seeing in the ev space very similar trend to what i saw back in the early 2000s in the dot-com space and the only difference that I'm seeing here is that a lot of these companies in the EV space actually have something tangible, right? They've actually putting together production lines, they're having to put together product. And so that is where it differs a little bit from the dot-com space. Of course, the dot-com was totally intangible. Here, there is some kind of tangible element to it. However, the multiples that investors are prepared to pay for electric vehicles at the moment just doesn't make sense to me. And I think the other big issue I have, and I think this is probably what a lot of individuals are sitting with at the moment. I personally love the concept of electric vehicles. I've been wanting to have an electric vehicle in my garage since the concept was ever first mentioned. Um, I mean, I've even gone as far as having electric everything. I've had an electric bicycle, I've had an electric skateboard. If I could have an electric car tomorrow, I would. But there's some real world stumbling blocks that I think a lot of people aren't focusing on. And of course, you know, it's, it's kind of like the investment space has become this weird vortex at the moment. If the company's involved in EV and they add the word uh, artificial intelligence behind it, suddenly the company's worth, you know, many multiples more than a traditional company. And I think somewhere in here has to be a logical discussion to say, okay, if I am gonna invest into this future technology, because let's face it, we all want it to go that way. We've gotta face the realities in front of us. We've gotta face the road along in the path forward to successful EV adoption. And the fact that a lot of the big name brands such as Toyota, name brands like Ford are focusing on EV, doesn't mean that mass adoption is there yet. Because Darby, there's something that a lot of people don't talk about. America and Europe as an example, are gonna be a lot closer to EV adoption than say for example where we live, which is in Africa. If you take for example, a look at India. I mean, India, they're battling to get people to normal combustion engines, never mind electric vehicles. There's an entire planet out there that are gonna have some real stumbling blocks. And it's only really the first world countries that are in a position to fully capitalize on electric vehicles. So there's Especially a lot Europe. of stuff I we mean, need to unpack here. There's a lot of electric vehicle sales in Europe. Most of it actually is, is in Europe and then obviously China as well. But, but then there is a challenge there as well. And I don't know if you can just quickly share my screen because this is, this is actually, I try and I try and present this argument to anybody that really isn't seeing both sides of the coin in terms of electric vehicles. And I think the car in the garage charging overnight is something we all aspire to. But what a lot of people don't realize about electric vehicles is the, the electricity, the, the power is still fundamentally coming from traditional coal powered stations. And certainly there's a lot of movements in the US to use, you know, for example, um, hydro, hydro um, technology, there's, uh, there's, there's a lot of new technologies emerging to basically empower these charging stations. But for most of the planet, Davi, if you put an electric car in my garage tomorrow, 
it's coming directly off the current electricity grid and which by the way living in South Africa gives me a different perspective about electric vehicles as well we are battling to keep up with command with with demand on the existing grid just to basically keep businesses going every single day and we haven't even begun to transition to greener technologies in terms of power supply so it's great to sit in a first world country and believe that that's the entire bubble of the world and you know everybody's going to be driving an electric vehicle but the truth of the matter is Davi we've got we've got a decade or two ahead of us before this becomes a widely adopted technology in my opinion now that's not to say that early adoption isn't a good thing that's not to say that there's not going to be decent sales out of first world countries but we have to understand there's certain technologies that are going to empower the EV space that are lagging about behind in my opinion and so honestly speaking Davi I don't know about you but I don't know which the winning EV stock is going to be um, I don't have a firm favorite uh, I don't I, I mean I have certain vehicles that I absolutely love the look of like I absolutely love the new F-150 electric vehicle from Ford that's coming out I love Canoe what they're doing with their vehicle I love Lucid's look and feel and design but I honestly don't know which one of these companies is going to be the ultimate front runner and you know of course tesla loyalists will say it's tesla uh, lucid loyalists will say it's lucid the apple guys are throwing their money behind apple's car there, there's just there's just so much out there so i have a completely different strategy but before we get into that i'd really love to know what your thoughts are on the ev space because you and i don't always have the same train of thought and that's something i love about this channel Yes, now of course. I mean, we, we we also we always have different kind of opinions when it comes to this, and I think my uh, my strategy is um, you know it's, it's probably going to uh, be completely different from most people's strategy when it comes to the EV space. So on that note of using electricity in order to power your car or charge your battery, there was one stock that I um, that I valued or looked at. What is it? I think about two two weeks ago, the Sono Group, which is a company based in Germany. Mm. So they actually only use um, solar panels. So the car is fitted with about 245 um, solar panels on the car. And it's a working prototype. Already sales, as the sales have begun coming in. Obviously, it will only be delivered next year, but they only make, make use of the sun in order to power the car. So it's a very affordable vehicle as well. Um, it, it, it will be affordable to the mass market. It's not like a luxury kind of car like Tesla. And um, mm. what's unique about them is they will also have a battery pack just like the, um, the Tesla battery you get that you can put on your wall for your home, right? But what makes this different mm. is you can come back at night while you're actually driving, the car is busy charging. And then at night, you can actually plug, plug your home into your car. So your car actually powers okay. your home. So I absolutely love mm. the, the idea. However, um, the stock went public, I think it was about three weeks or so ago. It, it started with like $23. It went all the way up to um, $30. Now it's down again and it's down a lot. But the only reason I haven't invested in that is because I haven't been able to see any financials. And I don't invest in companies when I don't see financials, you know. So it is on my watch list. I'm keeping an eye on it. And so is Tesla. Actually, I love Tesla. I love what Tesla is doing. I do realize the fact that they are light years ahead of any other EV when it comes to the data they get, right? But I'm just not prepared to pay the Tesla multiple or the Tesla valuation. I mean, just last year, October, Elon actually came out and he said that he thought that Tesla was overvalued. You know, and then they, back then the stock was trading at about $440. So I don't know how these Tesla bulls come up with their valuations, but to me, I'm not prepared to gamble with my money. So for that reason, Tesla still is on my watch list, but it's definitely not in my portfolio. So I'm doing something completely different. And um, shall I get you to buy a whole strategy or I can maybe just... Well, before you, before you do that, I think, it's, I think you brought up a relevant point about Tesla and that is the multiple that people are prepared to pay. The, the problem is, David, this is just my personal opinion, but I feel like there is so much sentiment behind the EV stocks. And it's not based on just people loving Tesla. It's based on people loving EV. We all want EV. I mean, we are tired of paying these ridiculous prices for fuel. Fuel is at an all time high. I don't think if you ask the average person if they want EV because it's better for the environment or they want it because it's better for their pocket, ultimately most people are going to say it's better for their pocket. They're tired of filling up at the gas yes. station. My problem is I cannot see the numbers when I and I've sat this year, I've extrapolated figures for Tesla, I've looked at Neo, I've looked at all the big EV companies. 
they're going to have to roll off so many cars off the production line over the next couple of years before before those before those valuations are ever like coming to materialize and the intrinsic values of these companies are completely out of whack and i think the problem we have here is we've got this deep pent-up demand within all of us we all want a cheaper more easier way to, to to get around with some kind of independence from the oil companies the problem is I think the market is willing to pay too many multiples for it at the moment. And so I completely agree with you. I think Tesla, great company, all the other companies also great companies. Tesla gets a lot of the credit. There's a lot of great companies out there as well. But the truth of the matter is, Davi, those valuations don't make sense. And as an investor, I've got to invest not with my heart. I've got to invest with my brain. And my brain is telling me these numbers don't make sense. So I think you and I are in agreement there. Maybe where we're going to disagree is on our strategy going forward. So I'd love to know what your strategy is. So I kind of take the back door when it comes to um, investing in the EV space, right? So to give you an example, um, let me bring up my screen quickly. Here. Um, okay, here we go. So these are the electric vehicle sales so far for 2021, right? Let me just adjust my screen okay. slightly here. Cause can't see it. Okay, there we go. Okay, so see, obviously yeah. Tesla is number one, then SAIC, then the Volkswagen Group, then BYD, then Hyundai. And then obviously yeah. you get all the other uh, guys entering the EV space as well. I mean, just earlier or last week, I actually um, reviewed uh, GM and I actually thought yeah. it was undervalued. I thought the, uh, GM is undervalued. They also pay dividend, but um, they actually, they delivered, what, uh, it was just under 200,000 200, electric vehicles last year. So. Um, I actually think that's uh, going for a company like that. It's not overvalued. The multiples make sense. The fundamentals make sense. GM have um, went through every single crisis, every every single cycle, and this is a cyclical industry, by the way, for you guys that don't know it. So um, the cycle might turn eventually. But they've they've tested the you know they've they've went through all the cycles. They've went through the recessions and they've survived. So I think something like that is a good good call. And then when it comes to the Volkswagen Group, we actually did a video on them. I also th think that um, it's also a great stock, you know. But that's not what I'm personally invested in. So what I actually invest in is companies that have investments within these auto or these EV companies. So the first one, obviously, you know that this is one of my favorites. Is obviously Tencent. So. Um, yeah. I love Tencent's business model. I love the business. I think they've got an amazing leadership team. Um, they've got such a great moat in the industry, you know. Um, they've And the investment portfolio they've got is just absolutely incredible. So Tencent actually owns 5% of Tesla, right? So if you invest in Tencent, eventually you get exposure to the likes of Tesla. They also own 21.6% of NEO. Now, when we look at Tencent, I actually look at the multiples based on the current business. So that's aside from the, the investment portfolio they've got. And if I look at Tencent's business model and um, the, the competitive advantage they've got within the industry, not only in China, but in the world, it just makes it, it just it's such a cheap stock. And paying that multiple for a company like Tencent absolutely makes sense. And for that reason, I have Tencent in my portfolio, but I also have it through the likes of Process, right? So it's not directly in Tencent. So they, yeah. like I said, they've got quite a few companies that invest in. This is their investment portfolio, and it's actually a very amazing investment portfolio. So they've got Activision Blizzard in here, Epic Games, they've got C, and they've got Spotify, and then obviously Tesla and Neo. So for me, that's a safe bet, you know. Even if mm. um, the cycle happens, EVs goes down, nothing is going to change with my investment because Tencent is still a massive company. It's still a great company. They've got amazing fundamentals and I'm, I'm picking it up at amazing prices. Next one, obviously, yeah. this one you reviewed is Rivian, right? So Rivian, yeah. once again, um, absolutely insane multiple. Um, Oh, it's just absolutely incredible what people are willing to pay for these things. But yeah, I mean, again, sorry, David, just to interrupt you quickly. I mean, I got to tell you, I've been following the Rivian project for a very long time. I've been following it way before they became popular. As you know, I'm a motorhead. I love vehicles. I love what Rivian has done with their vehicle. I've been following that vehicle. And there's a couple of others that I've been following, which are nowhere near mainstream media at the moment. Another company is Aptera, if any of you guys are interested. Um, now, they're producing gr a great product, but Davi, how, how do you become the third most valuable motor company in the world, right, without selling a single vehicle? No, it, it's, it, it's, it, it doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense at all, you know, but 
So listen, there's definitely something to rev in. I mean, if Amazon backs a company, they are not yeah. going to back a company without doing their due diligence, right? But I, I prefer agree. to invest in Amazon instead. So Amazon owns 20% of Rivian. So if yeah. we see the upside in Rivian in the future, if if it rallies, if the stock price rallies, eventually we'll have exposure to it via Amazon. And looking at Amazon's business yeah. model, I don't, I look at the fundamentals, the fundamentals make sense. Okay, it is trading at a pretty high multiple, but obviously you are paying for future growth. But if you look at that PE ratio they're trading at today, it's actually um, the lowest PE ratio they have traded on in, I think about 10 years, you know? So yeah. aside from that, they're also doing a lot of other things which we are not going to get into now. I mean, we've got a few different videos on Amazon that people can watch if they do, but there's a lot of exciting things that Amazon is doing. and. I truly believe that Amazon still has a very, very long way to go and there's still a lot of growth left for Amazon. I mean, not only with the, um, with the uh, uh, cloud business they've got, but the advertising side as well. So something that is very exciting about the advertising space for Amazon, obviously um, iOS uh, brought out that feature that basically blocks Google and, um, and, and Facebook from, from tracking you. So a lot of these people are now heading over to Amazon. Amazon is seeing absolutely a tremendous growth in the advertising um, space and mm -hmm. the margins are extremely high. So look, for me, it only makes sense rather backing a company like Amazon because if Rivian actually uh, does rally, like I said, then eventually I'll have exposure to it, but I still invest in a company that have got solid fundamentals as well. The next one, obviously, mm -hmm. a one I've covered on the channel as well, Apollo, which is part of Baidu. And um, Baidu, I've got a lot of exciting things. The company is definitely, in my, in, in, um, in my view, definitely undervalued. And mm. I thought it was undervalued aside from Apollo and all the autonomous driving they've got. So I think there's a lot mm -hmm. of exciting things when it comes to, um, to, 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 to Baidu. Obviously, they are losing market share in terms of search, but they are making a very, very big play into AI and Robotaxi. I mean, they've got a really big cloud business who is growing absolutely tremendously well. And then they've got the Robotaxi as well. And they've covered 30, uh, 30 plus cities already, Justin. So they've got 89,000 passengers that have conduct, conducted test drives and they've got working prototypes out already, um, you know, obviously in the streets already, you know. So obviously the Chinese companies are taking a big hit. And I think that it's a bargain getting into these um, companies at such low prices. To be honest, I was actually pretty disappointed to see Alibaba go up earlier um, or earlier this week because I would like to get in below $100. I, I would absolutely love it. <laughs> <laughs> so next one, uh, Alibaba, Tens, uh, Xpeng. So this is actually a very interesting stock, uh, Xpeng. Um, they were trading at absolutely insane multiples at some point. Um, it, it's, it's better now, obviously, because of the Chinese uh, stocks taking a beating. But Xpeng, I, I reviewed them earlier this year. They have done a lot of things within a span, this, this time span of this year alone. So the Q4 deliveries of 300, 30, 34,500 to, to 36,500, which is up 166 to 181%. That's the only, that's deliveries alone. So they are just behind Tesla at the moment in China when it comes to deliveries. Obviously, Tesla is still ahead of them, but they are closing in on Tesla very, very quickly. So the revenue also up 149 to 163%. It's still trading at a little bit of a high multiple for me, and it's still a, lo a, a loss-making company, you know? So for that reason, I don't invest in, in, in Xpeng itself. But once again, Alibaba holds 22.43% of the company. So for that reason, I think that Alibaba, aside from the, from the Xpeng thing, is an amazing bargain. I mean, it's just the most incredible bargain at the moment. I would... I would think you're insane if you don't buy Alibaba stock at the moment. But aside from the fundamentals they've got at the moment, they still have an investment portfolio as well. And like I said, Xping, um, they own 22.43% of Xping. And then finally, the if you look at BYD, it's number four in terms of vehicle deliveries. This is actually a stock that Warren Buffett backs. And um, Warren Buffett wouldn't, would, we, are, we know that he would do his deal. He would never, and he is hectic when it comes to due diligence. He would not invest in a company that he doesn't feel um, does have solid fundamentals. So I would rather go that way through Berkshire. I think Berkshire will also always be a great bet because it's a safe stock. You know, even in a market crash, Berkshire yeah. will also do well. However, I'm not prepared to Berkshire to buy Berkshire just yet. I actually did own it um, last year, 
and I sold it when I made, I, I made about 50% on the stock and I thought uh, maybe there's a little bit too much hype in the market at the moment. But I, I think that Berkshire will always be a safe bet. And I think in a, in a good correction, I would definitely love to buy Berkshire. So Berkshire has been on my watch list for quite some time. Absolutely love the stock. It's such a safe stock. But um, yes, look at the moment I see a few better alternatives for me personally in my portfolio, such as Alibaba. But Berkshire, like I said, it's it's probably a most a lot safer stock to own than than Alibaba at this point. So I think if you if you're looking for a kind of a hedge, I think Berkshire will be a good bet, um, you know, a good company to bet on. But once again, they also own 22% of of BYD. You know, mm. so I think to me personally, those feel like a lot safer bets when it comes to the EV space. I feel like I do have exposure to the market, even though it's not directly in the companies in the EV companies. But to me, that makes the most sense in terms of buying companies with solid fundamentals, safe companies, and lessen my risk. Well, Davi, you and I have been doing business uh, for more than a decade, and uh, it will come no, as no surprise to you that I am uh, the ultimate contrarian. And I certainly agree with a lot of the things you've been saying, um, and I think there's some really good advice for people in there. My strategy is a little bit the same, but also very different. So one of the things I always talk about is rather than going mining yourself, you know, stand and sell the shovels. And this is a core part of my investment strategy. So I think there's one thing you and I both fundamentally agree on, and that is that if you're going to invest in the EV space, you're probably not going to pick a clear winner. And so you either got to do one of two things, either go invest into an ETF that is specifically um, targeting the EV space. And there's, there's some really good ETFs out there that do a good spread across, you know, like 20 or 30 of the best EV related stocks, right? So that's one really good strategy. I don't like that strategy personally. For me, I have a slightly different strategy. And I think part of it is quite similar to yours in the sense that I want to invest into companies that have a strong play in EV, but also have plays in other places. So that if the EV thing doesn't work out, they're at least covering their bases and there's a bit of risk uh, being spread around. Um, if you look specifically at the EV space, and again, this is just my personal opinion, it's hard to pick a clear winner. In addition to which, to me, the winners are always going to be the companies that supply components, right? Because at the end of the day... I knew you, you were going own, to say that. <laughs> <laughs> there's, you can either own a slice of Toyota, right, and just own Toyota, or you can have a slice of a company that supplies. Toyota, General Motors, Ford, and all of them, right? And those are the companies that are very attractive to me. And I, I, th I guess I'm leaning back a little bit into my entrepreneurial nature here when I talk about these sorts of things, because one of the things that some of my early business mentors taught me was, you know, if you produce a lot of pies and uh, you, you sell those pies, you know, ultimately it, it makes sense to own the entire production line. And unfortunately in the motor vehicle space, that doesn't happen because supply of components is changing so much in the production lines, especially now as a retooling for the EV space. It makes sense to actually own the business producing the pies, right? And so from that perspective, when I look at the EV space at the moment, um, there really is a couple of very clear plays to me. One is you're going to go into an ETF. Like I said, that's not for me. The second is you're going to go into potentially the battery uh, supply side. So there's a lot of good companies out there producing batteries that are aggressively working on the battery technology. And there's, there's probably a good host of about 20 or 30 different stocks that you could look at. So that is a good proponent because now all of a sudden you're not exposed to one particular brand. Suddenly now you're exposed to a manufacturer of components that goes to all the brands or potentially a lot of the brands. So that is a play that potentially makes sense to me. That is not my call either, by the way, but it is a play that does make sense to me. Um, the other is potentially looking at the mining side of things. And you know, you've been talking a lot about nickel, for example, this year, which is a key component in, uh, in battery manufacture. There's a lot of other materials that are core to, to producing EVs and not necessarily unique to the EV market, but certainly a big proponent of the EV makeup. And so there are certainly some mining stocks that are very undervalued at the moment. Resource stocks have really felt the pinch in 2021 as opposed to all the other stocks out there that have seen massive growth. So I think there's a great entry point in specifically your mining or your resource-based stocks. So that's another proponent that you could play. 
that's not necessarily my choice either. I've gone down all of the checklists and I've got which one makes the most sense to me. So for me personally, when I'm looking to invest into a business, whether it's through the stock market or you know indirectly, I'm looking specifically for the highest potential margin for the lowest barrier of entry in terms of getting to market. In other words, the cost of delivery is gonna be the cheapest. And so for me, this, the play that makes the most sense personally is the tech play. I think the tech play behind EV is the one that makes sense. It's gonna have the highest margin over time. They're gonna be able to have widely adopted um, reach across multiple brands. And of course, then there's the other thing that a lot of people are not talking about is the fact that the EV space is gonna take a long time to mature in my personal opinion. It's before it gains real mass market adoption, we're still gonna have combustion motor vehicles on the road. And so I would like tech that basically goes over both of those, but it's still gonna have a big proponent of growth, especially in the EV space. And so Davi, for me, it comes down to two key industry sectors. And I've been thinking about this really hard all year. I've been investing accordingly. I've really taken my time to make sure I don't miss out on this potential EV growth market. And so for me, it comes down to two things. On the tech side, I'm really focused on anything that is very much geared towards self-driving. Now, when I say self-driving, I don't, I'm not gonna necessarily say full self-driving, but there's a lot of businesses that are gonna be focused on self-driving tech that bring in the safety factors that either allow, allow full autonomous driving or at least feeds back a lot of data in terms of safety and security and all the rest. So for me, that's one key proponent that I've been looking at. The other that I've been looking at is specifically some of the technology that's gonna be empowering this industry as well as many other industries. And one of the reasons why I love Intel so much is because Intel is playing directly into you both going to say of these Intel. <laughs> core focuses for me. So the one stock that I've got a firm eye on is Mobile Eye, which is gonna be IPOing next year. By the way, I will not be buying the IPO. Uh, and there's a very good reason for it. I'm exposed to the IPO automatically through Intel today at a much yeah. lower price than it's gonna IPO at. If you're interested in the mobile I IPO, you should be buying up Intel shares all day because Intel basically bought that company it's still for cheap. pennies on the dollar, you know? Um, they bought it for 15? And it's expect it's, so they bought mobile I for 15 billion and it's now yep. um, valued at 144 billion. And something we need to point out is that Mobile Eye has got a 22 year track record, right? This is not a brand new startup that's IPOing. This is a company that's IPOing that's got top line revenue, bottom line revenue. In fact, all the advanced driver stuff that you've got in your car right now, such as uh, park distance control, lane change technology, early warning, most of that has been produced by Mobile Eye over the last 22 years. So this is not a new business. This is a business that's being brought to maturity by Intel. If you are interested in the EV space, if you're interested specifically in this play, then mobile eye is definitely a big thing to keep your, your, your focus on, but the exposure to me is better through Intel, and I'll tell you why. I believe as well that with robotics coming on, and, I'm, and we talk about robotics, I'm talking across so many different industry spheres. We're talking about in the EV space, we're talking on production lines, in fact, the robotics that are going to be producing EVs are going to be heavily reliant on chips. And so I've got a big spread on chips at the moment. So all chip makers, whether it's through Taiwan Semiconductor, whether it's through Micron, whether it's through Intel, I've set up my own personal little index around these, um, these chip manufacturers. My top one that I'm betting on the most aggressively is Intel. And a lot of that has to do with not what's happening over the next two years, but rather what's happening over the next five years. And I know that AMD has been taking market share from them. I know that you know, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of talk about Intel having been losing market share. But what nobody's seeing is the fact that Intel has been investing dramatically over the last two, three years. While everybody's been on the focus on the growth of chips for you know, your traditional stuff, Intel is focusing on the second and third and fourth generation from here, which is of course 5G, EV, robotics. And I think my top play in the EV space is actually Intel. And then that is spread further, a little bit deeper down by going into creating my own fund around chip makers. 
But that is my personal strategy going into EV. I don't wanna be directly invested into EV as a play. I think it is risky. I think that the, the adoption is not at maturity yet. And so for that reason, it just makes sense for me to go that one or two tiers below. And uh, you know, again, I may be wrong and that's absolutely okay. These are opinions and none of us are gonna be 100% correct all of the time. But for me, I follow my contrarian rules, which is not to just follow the hype of the market. No, I completely agree with you. And that's also why I own um, Intel. You know, it's also, it's, it's, I believe it's trading at a very cheap value or multiple at the moment. And that's just because of negative sentiment in the market. But another one yeah. I love is Micron Technology. Now, I've spoken about a lot yeah. about Micron Technology in the last while. And the main reason for having Micron Technology is because of the DRAM they produce, right? So there are basically only three players in the world left when it comes to um, when it comes to DRAM. It's, it's Samsung, it's Micron, and then it's SK, SK Hynix. And with all yep. the 5G devices going out, all the EVs, all of them are going to need uh, going to use 5G, right? I mean, we all know that, yep. and it's going to grow at an astronomical space, uh, 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 pace. So it's not going to be EVs only, but your phone, your laptops, everything, everything yep. will be connected via 5G. Now, when it comes to 5G, they actually use 50% more DRAM than the normal devices. And mm -hmm. once again, only three players. It's Micron, it is, um, it is, it is Samsung, and SK Hynix. So where a lot of people believe it's a cyclical industry, I actually think that the cyclicality will kind of fall away with this new trend and with 5G coming along. So I think that in the future, Mic Micron will do exceptionally well, as well as um, Intel. Well, Davi, the one thing I will say when it comes to the semiconductor space, there's a, there's a reason why I don't have a clear favorite. I mean, it might sound like I'm promoting Intel as a clear favorite. I want to just be clear. I'm, I'm talking about Intel because of its current valuation. I think based on the current value, it is, it, it is, a, it is an absolute no-brainer. If you start looking at Micron, you start looking at AMD, you start looking at uh, some of the other Nvidia. players, you'll start to see that yeah, I mean, NVIDIA especially, you'll start to see the multiples are a hell of a lot different. The one thing I will say about the semiconductor space, which I think a lot of people don't necessarily focus on, it's, it's very easy to talk about existing technologies that have been licensed. It's very easy to talk about existing technologies that have been patented, okay, and are in the works. So classic case in, 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 in this example is, of course, the stuff happening around DRAM. There's also a lot of discussion around, in fact, Alibaba's making a big play in this as well, is the new processing units for, um, for data centers. But honestly speaking, I don't think there's anybody who truly knows what tech is coming out of the semiconductor industry because you must remember for them to remain competitive, they've got to keep a lot of their cards close to their chest. They've got to literally not let anybody know about anything until it's patented, until it's, it's, they've protected their intellectual property. So the reason why I talk about a spread amongst all of these key players is to understand that those who have the means, they have the finance, they have the financial runway, and they've got the history, are not gonna be sitting on their laurels. They're gonna be sitting there developing the next generation of tech. And whether it's gonna be Intel that runs at the front, whether it's gonna be AMD, whether it's Nvidia, I've got no idea, but what I do know is it makes sense to bet on all of them because any single one of them could be the front runner. And even if they come out as the front runner, it won't be long before the other companies follow suit. That is the nature of the business. But Davi, we've been saying it this year, all year. There's nothing that's not going to have a chip in it. I mean, your fridge has got a chip, your dishwasher's got a chip, your car's got chips now, you know, everything is coming down to the semiconductor space. And I really believe that if you're gonna make a play in the EV space, potentially this is a really good play. Alternatively, as I said, go look at batteries, go look at charging stations. That's another one of the plays I didn't talk about. The reason I'm not, I'm not big on charging stations at this moment in time, I personally believe that the charging station technology is gonna change so dramatically over the next five years. Whether it's gonna be uh, solar-based, whether it's gonna be hydrogen-based, whether it's gonna be um, some kind of renewable, recyclable energy, I don't know. And for me, that's why charging station is not, they're not necessarily a good play for me at this time. But certainly if you wanna be in the EV space, you don't wanna go and do your due diligence, I'd say an ETF is probably the best option. Alternatively, if you don't believe in ETFs, just go and pick the four or five best traditionally vehicle companies. You have gotta to put Toyota on your list. As much as they're not making big plays at the moment, when Toyota starts delivering EVs, trust me, they're gonna upset the market. 
you know, obviously guys like Ford, guys like General Motors, they've been written off in this in this discussion in favor of the, the favorites at the moment like Tesla and Neo and Lucid. And uh, if you bet against them, you're probably gonna lose money in the long term because they have years of experience, you know, in, in the in the space. And they are and profitable. So, <laughs> and they're profitable. You know, that's the other thing. I mean, uh, I've, I've listened to the interview from Elon Musk talking about how close Tesla came to running out of cash. And, you know, just pull some of those government subsidies and we might be back to that situation again. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of EV companies out there that literally have a very small runway to make profit. And uh, for me personally, I'd rather go on a level deeper. As I said, sell, go and sell the shovels rather than go do the mining yourself. And so for me, that kind of makes sense. No, I completely agree. So every stock we talked about today, we have covered on this channel. If you wanted to see a deeper analysis of these companies, simply head over to our channel and you can go to the videos tab and then look for the stock you are interested in. Like I said, there are hundreds of videos out there and every single stock except for Berkshire, we have covered on this channel. So we will look at doing Berkshire in the future. Finally, if you disagree with us, please leave us a comment. Tell us why, if you've got a different play that you are actually doing at the moment, also leave us a comment and then we will check it out as well. We are always interested in comments from our users. And then if you wanna see stocks that we feel are undervalued at the moment, simply click on the link coming up in this video right now.